What you should do when you get a chance is you should um, head over to IFL TV and check out Cook and Cassie's uh, recent interview today, March the 10th, 2015, with uh, Eddie Hearn. They were basically talking about what the title of this video is. And in fact, I'm going to post a link to the video right down below. Shout out to IFL TV. But basically, um, Warrior Boxing Promotions has been $3.1 million for 24 and 1 with 16 KOs. Andre Durrell to take on James DeGale, 20 and 1 with 14 KOs. April the 24th, basically, it looks like that's most likely 90% going to be the date. 2015 is looking like it may be in Chicago the same date that uh, Anthony Durrell is going to be fighting I forgot who voluntary defense um I'm T Street Controversy this is T Street Controversy live on realcombatmedia.com I cover every single major fight live I'll be joining um, the Sky Sports toe to toe ringside podcast soon um, talking um boxing you know something that I enjoy very much and let's just cut it short and just say listen Warrior Boxing Promotions just pops up out of nowhere with $3.1 million. Let's just talk about it like exactly how it is. Warrior Boxing Promotions is Al Heyman. That's Al Heyman $3.1 million. And Warrior Boxing Promotions has been promoting Al Heyman fighters for quite some time. Now, you know Al Heyman fighters don't have promotional contracts, but what they do is they fight on promoters' cards like the DeBella, Warrior, Goose and Tudor. And basically, he has an agreement with the promoters like, well, we are going to eat these fighters a fight with you. But basically, they steal my fighters. It, was a, it, it, it started with Golden Boy Promotions. When we saw that fighters were signing with Al Heyman, but you wasn't seeing any stories about fighters signing with Golden Boy Promotions. To whereas in now, Al Heyman just has all these fighters pretty much thanks to Richard Schaefer allowing this to happen. And you got Al Heyman being the most powerful man in boxing. That's a whole entirely different, like it's a long story. I can break it all down, you know, from top to bottom, but it's a very long story. You know, so sometimes I may get to a point where I try to rush and, and, and try to uh, compact all that information into a 10 to 15, 17 minute video and I end up looking like I'm rambling because I'm trying to educate you on so much information. So what I'm going to say is this, listen, it's, it's, it's a very complex situation, but I've been following it so long I know exactly what's going on. So when it comes to Warrior Boxing Promotions, when you hear or you think of when you're reading, what? Warrior Boxing Promotions, $3.1 million, they're going to be paying James DeGale, $1.5 million. They're going to be paying um, um, Andre Durrell, $1.5 million. And Canelo made $1.5 million to fight Laura. Laura made $1 million. Keith Thurman made $1.5. Iris Landy Law. I mean, um, um, Robert Guerrero and Adrian Broner made one point. You know, Marcos Madonna made $1.5 um, to fight Mayweather, even though he got back in rights and all that money. But... It's a lot of money if you get what I'm saying, if you get where I'm going with this. So for James DeGale to be making $1.5 million, and we haven't even talked about the fact that Eddie Hearn Sky Sports was already was already going to bid $2.1 million. You know, so well they bid $2.1 million, which is which would have gave the boxers um both of them about a little bit over $1 million a piece, which is big money for a fight of with, with Andre Durrell, for example. Um, I believe he's had about six fights since 2010. I covered, I covered maybe about 40, uh, four of those fights maybe if there was six. I know, I know I watched him, but since 2010, he hasn't fought anyone. You know what I mean, don't get me wrong, he fought Carl Frotch and Arthur Abraham back to back, but at the same time, that was in a Super 6 tournament. But then since then, he hasn't fought anyone. Yes, he had the promotional dispute with, uh, uh, 50 Cent. He ended up becoming an Al Heyman fighter, but still, if you look at his track record since 2010, five years ago, and he is very good, but five years ago, there's nothing there to where in you got a fresh James DeGale, in my opinion, who's running down on fools. You know, if you ain't see what he did to Marco Antonio Parabon, I'm thinking like, okay, all right, Parabon was almost WBC 168 pound champion. You know, he, he was putting some work on uh, Saki Obik. I understand, you know, he came in looking a little nasty, but at the same time, as far as body wise, but at the same time, looking at his other fights, he always looked like that. So I'm not going to discredit the fact that um, James Gale just knocked him out like that. The fact that he stopped Brandon Gonzalez, I'm thinking like, yo, 
Brandon and Gonzalez ain't never been beat down like that. So, and then I look at, well, what Andre Durrell is doing, don't get me wrong, he's a very, very, very good boxer, but I'm sorry, I'm giving the, I'm giving the edges to James DeGale because he can box too, but also he has the power. And I saw, um, I forgot what the name of the fighter was, but Andre Durrell's last fight, he got cracked. He recovered quickly, but he started acting like you know he was uh he was uh showboating a little bit. But you can tell he was easy. I mean, you can tell he was hurt. Now I'm not judging him off of that one fight, but it's like this. Put it this way: when I match up the level of competition, even though Andre Durrell was more experienced, and I look at the fact that James DeGale has been um beating up quality opponents in this in, in his last four fights you know and then if you add in well the George Groves loss if you add in you know the Paul Smith fight Marco Antonio Parabon and then Brandon Gonzalez and then you look at him and it was somebody else in there I forgot who I'm missing the name it was somebody else in there but then when you look at uh, Andre Durrell Think of the names, even though I covered the fights. I covered them. Remember, I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live at RealCombatMedia.com. And I cover every single major fight live. So I covered all those Andre Durrell fights. And guess what? Guess what? I can't remember none of the opponent's names. You'll see me somewhere doing a video covering Andre Durrell versus such and such, saying the date and everything like that. And I don't remember who the guys were. Why? Because it doesn't matter. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, the fact that he's making $1.5 million, I can look at James DeGale and see why he's making that money. I say, okay, all right, that's a crazy payday. But the fact that both of them are making that amount of money, Al Heyman, I mean, thank you, Al Heyman. Even you got, you mean, James DeGale should be thanking Al Heyman. Now, when it comes to judging controversy, when it comes to if Andre Durrell actually wanted to go back to the UK where I thought he would be getting bigger money and maybe somewhere behind closed doors. Al Heyman told him, like, listen, you'll be making good money over there. I know they're going to throw some money at you, but you want to go over there and risk getting robbed again? So maybe this is Al Heyman's way of repaying him. For example, we don't know how much Andy, I mean, we don't know how much Peter Quillen's going to be making a take on Andy Lee. That's going to be something to look at. You know, how much is Peter Quillen getting paid to fight Andy Lee for what or what or what, or what may not be a title fight? Now, like I said, it's a whole complex situation going on with the. Thank you, Al Heyman. It's a whole complex situation going on with all this like Al Heyman stuff and this maneuvering with the titles and with the PBC not. You know, acknowledging belts, but then you have Anthony Durrell. I mean, excuse me, Andre Durrell versus James DeGale for 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 a vacated IBF belt. But it's going to be on a PBC event. So will Al Heyman allow for the IBF belt to be paraded around on a PBC? You see what I'm saying? So you got to follow boxing to really understand where I'm going with all this. This is it's, it's almost like pro wrestling to an extent. It's almost like pro wrestling. But before I go on and continue rambling for the next 20 or 30 minutes or so, and then, you know, keep trying to, not to compel myself to tell you the whole story of how Golden Boy broke up and why they broke up and how Al Heyman came to rise and from working with uh, guys like uh, Eddie Murph, Murphy and being good friends with Eddie Murphy's father, working with uh, Prince currently uh, promoting Lady Gaga concerts. Um, trying to handle the little Wayne Birdman beef right now that's currently going on. It's so much stuff that you don't know, but I know, and that's why you should subscribe to 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 to, to my channel. Like I know, literally, you probably think like, "What's this guy talking about, little Wayne Birdman?" But listen, all that stuff I just said, real talk. T Street controversy, T Street controversy live at RealCombatMedia.com. I cover every single major fight live. So right now it is March the tenth. By March the twenty fifth. We should know where the venue is going to be. We should know um, the exact date. It's looking like it's going to be April the 24th. Um, Eddie Hearn on the uh, call with Cook and Cassius. I'm going to post the link right down below. He said that it's going to be, uh, it's looking like it's going to be April the 24th. It's looking like it's going to be in Chicago. Both fighters making a little bit over $1.5 million. It's going to be for the vacated IBF 168-pound title that used to belong to Carl Frotz. Carl Frotz beat George Groves twice defending those titles, and they still go ahead and, and strip my man, you know. Um, James Gill coming to the United States. Honestly, to be perfectly honest with you, I hope that they pull it off kind of... No, it's not going to be in New York. No way. It's going to be in Chicago. It's going to be in Chicago. 
It's going to be in Chicago or probably Michigan or something. Nah, Detroit. Nah, I don't think so. Um, if I'm not in the building, I'm going to have someone in the building. Um, Team Two Street Controversy and definitely probably someone from uh, RealCombatMedia.com covering the fight. Um, April 24th, I'm not going to be able to make the fight myself. Um, I would love to, but if this thing works out, maybe Andre, excuse me, James DeGale will be coming back to the United States again. Someday, if not, I'm definitely going to kill Brook Fight because I'm pretty sure they will bring him to MSG or Barclays, hopefully. T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live.